Now that we have talked about some of the background ideas and seen some examples of what to look for when searching for GIS data, let's talk now about some of the ways you'll actually work with data in a hands-on capacity in ArcGIS Pro. Specifically, I want to tell you now about file geo databases. To quote from the file geo database documentation, a file geo database is a collection of files or folders on disk that can store, query, and manage spatial and non-spatial data. A, little, a lot of data sets you'll find on the web are still in the shapefile vector format. I encourage you to start learning how to use file geo databases, as they can provide a nice way to store and organize data sets that you will either find on the internet or create yourself. And in just a moment, I'll show you how to create your own file geo databases. The most fundamental item of a file geo database are what are known as feature classes. Feature classes are a collection of features of the same geometry. Most often, these are vector data sets that can represent point, line, polygon, and multi-part features. In fact, the term feature class really can be used for any vector data set as shapefiles themselves are considered a type of feature class. As I said previously, features within feature classes will all share the same geometry. For example, a feature class showing the location of water fittings would all be point feature classes. A feature class showing roads would be a line feature class. A feature class showing street blocks would be a polygon feature class. And a feature class showing street names would be an annotation feature class. Note too how the symbol for a feature class reflects the feature class's geometry. For example, a series of three points for a point feature class. Inside of the file geo database, you have what are then known as feature data sets. Feature data sets are a logical way of organizing feature classes within the file geo database. For example, storing all of the information about land use for a city in one feature data set, and all of the information about water resources for a city in a different feature data set. In these images, you see two feature data sets that illustrate this example. Note how each feature data set contains multiple types of feature classes. It's also very important to note that all of the feature classes inside of a feature data set must be referenced to a common coordinate system. Furthermore, if a feature class is not inside of a feature data set, it's what's known as a standalone feature class. Feature data sets can also contain special feature classes such as network data sets, but these topics are outside the scope of this particular video. File geo databases can also store raster data sets such as images and digital elevation models. And they can also contain mosaic data sets, which are used for large collections of raster data sets, most typically large collections of imagery. A file geo database can also contain what are known as standalone tables. You can think of a standalone table like an Excel spreadsheet, where it's simply a table with rows and columns, but without any particular spatial properties. An important point too, is that each of the columns in the table has a data type. For example, a column might be a numerical data type called an integer, while another column might be a text string data type. Standalone tables are often used for table joining, a topic I'm not gonna talk about in this video, but see other videos on this channel on the topic of table joining. Finally, there are attribute domains. Attribute domains are the idea of a predetermined list of values that can be used for populating records in a feature class or standalone table. An easy way to think of this idea is that when you order something online and you have to fill out addresses, 
you're often given a predetermined list of countries or states to choose from. The importance of having domain tables is that it allows for standardized data when creating new records in a feature class or standalone table. Using the previous example, when ordering something online, if people had to fill out the names of states or countries on their own, the records would quickly become inconsistent due to misspelling, typos, and other problems. This image shows an example of a domain table used for determining business types when doing field data collection in a refugee camp. Note how the data being stored is actually a numeric integer code, but has an associated textual description. This is a classic database technique where a number is stored, but text is actually used to display and describe the data. This allows for smaller amounts of data to be stored and flexibility in case a description changes as multiple records do not need to be updated. I'll show you how to create a domain table that utilizes these ideas in just a moment. Next, let's talk about creating and editing vector geographic data. ArcGIS Pro comes with a wide range of tools that allow you to create and edit vector feature classes. If you look at the edit toolbar, you'll see tools available that allow you to create, modify, and delete features as well as manage the attributes associated with features. In particular, make note of the tools group, where you are given numerous tools to allow you to modify geographic features as well as create annotations. One of the most classic ways to go about creating vector features is what is known as digitizing. This is where you trace vector shapes from an underlying raster image. This concept is best explained using a hands-on demonstration. So let's get started now with applying all the concepts we've learned in these videos to the GIS laboratory exercise that you can download from the video description below. And where we're going to work with data in ArcGIS Pro using a case study of disaster management in Hurricane Dorian. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.